know by passion, um, as I've arrived over the last couple of days, there's been a number of people say to me, mm, that whole passion thing kind of got you into a bunch of trouble last week, didn't it? And that's really uh, what I'm here to talk about today. So that is a photo of what our traditional fan base looks like. Uh, that is um, a game day. That group of people there are called the Kennel, which is a self-led group that support uh, the Bulldogs, and they make those banners themselves. They um, bring along those signs. The big heads that you can see in that photo are something initiative that we've talked about as we've tried to um, grow our game day experience and <coughs> make sure that we have an experience of powering um, our passion and our fans. I'd just like to start with a hype reel, which is the something that we've developed this year that's new that we play before every game. This football club uh, has a rich past. One characterised by camaraderie, mateship, relentlessness, doggedness, indivisible solidarity, amazing achievements and so much more. Connecting to this proud past is paving the way for our future success. The true test of any team is not merely to win, it's not its wins or its losses, it's not that ratio, but it's the ability to weather a storm, to get back, get back up and bounce back. This is resiliency, but this is mental toughness. That's what it's all about. Down the tunnel, down the blue and white tunnel. They don't just like it, they are in love with it. Oh my goodness! Josh Jackson! The dogs are in again! Morris has saved a try! Johnson hasn't got there! Flying Josh Morris! This is the last, here comes their shot, and there goes the kick from Hodgkinson. He's got it, they've got it, they've got the kick, they've got the game. He is a wonder boy. Uh, so that video was produced completely in-house. We have a digital team, which I'll talk a, bit, a little bit uh, about later, uh, and uh, we produce footage like that all the time because that is the reality of engaging with a fan base now for us on a regular basis. So I'll just run through quickly who our Bulldogs fans are. It'll give you a bit of an idea about who we're trying to communicate and build relationships with. Um, so we, uh, it's our 80th anniversary this year, which means obviously we've been around for 80 years. That is the, f the four logos and the four brands that we've worked under under that period of time. Um, and we try really hard to integrate that at every stage in what we do. So it is about where we've come from. It's about who we are. It's about the good stories. Um, and there's lots of those. And there's also some not so good stories. And that is what makes the, the people that are the fans of the Bulldogs believe in this brand. They don't just live it, they love it. It is religion to them. And they go to work, many of them, to make sure they can earn the money that they need to be able to buy a season pass, to be able to come in the weekends and have that Bulldogs experience. It is about the feedback they give us. It's about the, the excitement that they experience. And when we win, they celebrate with us. And when they lose, they feel it all week until we go into a game the following week. <clears throat> so we've just relaunched our strategic plan uh, and also a new vision, which is um, Bulldogs, the family club that unites and inspires. And those words are chosen, obviously, because the unite and inspire thing is about what we see. And when you see that height rail and you see those fans and how much it means to them every week, um, that's it's really important. Um, and our values were, we had five values and we, we've sort of scrunched it down into three because we really believe that tough, resilient and family particularly is the one that brings the Bulldogs together. The Bulldogs have a very long history of, of family involvement. A lot of brothers played for our club. Um, the, the great Bullfrog Moore, who was the CEO, 
after 25 years of the Bulldogs, he had every, just about every family member he could find employed by the Bulldogs. And when he found, he had daughters, he married them off to footballers um, so that they could continue to be part of the club. But that sort of overwhelming sense of, of who Bullfrog Moore is and that family engagement for the Bulldogs is something that resonates um, right throughout our whole culture. So our fans, as you can see, spread right across the ages. Um, so the Bulldogs are the white bar at the bottom. Um, and you can see that we're sort of fairly much um, across the population um, and equal. Um, down the bottom you'll see that for rugby league fans, um, that in the middle there, rugby league fans, 40% um, female, 60% male. Uh, we have a slightly more female skew with 44% being Bulldogs fans. And what we've seen is since I've been appointed as CEO of the Bulldogs, we've seen a much uh, a, a larger growth in female engagement, female membership, um, female merchandise sales. And um, during the grand final week, I was last year I was doing a television live cross and uh, into the news hour, and I turned around, and behind me they had a whole lot of fans yelling and screaming. Um, and there was um, kids, and of the kids there was about 10 standing behind me, and nine of them were girls, all dressed head to toe in Bulldogs gear. And that's a really amazing influence that, um, that I think the, uh, my appointment into the Bulldogs role, and certainly um, has given a lot of um, young fans that belief and aspiration that you can grow up to be a CEO. Our fans are spread right across Australia, as you would imagine. Um, so for us, it's not just about New South Wales, although that's uh, by far and away where our, our base is. But every time we travel, when we take a team away um, to play the Storm or to play the Cowboys, uh, we work really hard to make sure we do a fan day there because they are the ones that queue for hours, want autographs and photographs, because they've somehow found a way to love the Bulldogs. And there's all sorts of stories as to why that's the case. Um, but they relate to us uh, just as importantly as whether they come to games every week or whether they're located somewhere else and how they um, gain the information about the Bulldogs in another way. Uh, we're also quite normal across the curve of Australia of how our uh, fans are related in, into their careers. Um, but very much the Bulldogs is a blue-collar team that is not about the top end of town in Sydney. It's not about um, the boardrooms of the CBD. It is very much about the panel beaters and the plumbers. We have the most multicultural fan base in the NRL, uh, very strongly Muslim. Um, we uh, are ANZ uh, Stadium's favourite tenants um, because uh, often um, because we, on the one hand, uh, she said bravely trouble free, um, because we don't drink. And that's the thing about um, the Muslim faith, they don't, they don't drink, so we don't sell much alcohol, so they don't make much money out of us, but at the same time, they're often, uh, fans are much easier to control when they're not drinking. Um, we have um, a, a base that is uh, the most multicultural, as I said, and, and during grand final week, when we saw those scenes of everyone coming together, all because they had a blue V on, that's how they um, showed their passion. It didn't matter what age, what race, what colour, what creed, what engagement. They started partying at 8 o'clock at night through to 12 o'clock um, and the, the police had to close the roads. Um, and they partied, they danced, they had fun and there wasn't a drop of alcohol to be seen. It was a very special experience. So not the richest fan base in the world. So you know, being cost conscious is very important. Um, so very much, uh, you know, in the medium curve of what you'd expect um, in a working class environment. So what does our reach look like? Um, we have 255,000 Facebook fans, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, 37,000 on Twitter and 50,000 on Instagram. Um, and that's really, for us, the modern way of communicating, as it is for all of us in this room now, the, un the opportunity to understand those relationships and how people um, want to engage with you, and that's what I'll go into on the back end of the presentation to, un to explain to you how it is that we communicate with our fans on a weekly basis. <coughs> So this is our Facebook fan distribution. So about 180,000 um, in Australia, as you would expect. But we've also got nearly 30,000 fans here in New Zealand. So every time we bring a game here, every time we turn up, um, when you go to the nines, you just see so many Bulldogs jerseys. It's just so really, um, it's really powerful to see how, how widely the brand has spread. Um, and then across Papua New Guinea, Fiji, um, and all the expats living in the UK and US. So we always have to think about how we're engaging, not w just with those people that turn up on game day, but also about those people that are trying to get that constant level of engagement and information um, and how, how they in interact and engage with the club. 
Uh, so this is a slide most recently from, uh, that reflects last year's uh, TV audiences in Australia. Um, we had 25 million people watch the Bulldogs play on television in 2014. We were the number one um, rating NRL club uh, on free to air. Um, and obviously that turns into the number of games that get selected for you to be on free to air, which is a sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy in a lot of ways, because that means when you have more free to air games, it means your sponsors are happy, it means you're getting more television hours. Um, when you're not at the top of that list, it makes it much more difficult, so it's also a, a downward spiral. So we're fortunate to be in that, uh, in that space. We were the number one club on free to air, and overall, when you combine free to air and Foxtel, we were the second highest watched club uh, in Australia, second only to the Hawks, who, uh, who obviously won the AFL Grand Final last year. So you can see that the numbers there, um, when you compare NRL to A League, for example, um, sort of the you know, 22 million viewers um, versus 1.7 million viewers. So the, the gap between what the NRL pumps out every week from a media pr perspective and a focus perspective and a drive of that whole industry that is in a NRL um, creates an enormous amount of eyeballs and, and an enormous amount of uh, commercial revenue. Just thought I'd give you an idea of, of for me, um, when Dave said to me we want to talk about the engagement empowered by passion, just to give you some idea of, of how we split and the people that we have in those areas. So I put football at the top of the list. We have 32 people working full-time in football, probably about another 20 uh, to 30 in volunteer space. And I put them at the top of the list because at the end of the day, we very much live or die by the results on the football field. And I'd like to tell you it's different, and I'd like to tell you that it's all because we're a great, we've got a great board and we make great decisions off the field and we have good commercial partnerships, but at the end of the day, the success or failure of the Bulldogs and how the fans are feeling, how much merchandise they buy, how they turn the television on, how many tickets, how, what their memberships are, are all about how we perform on the football field. Uh, we're five and a half people dedicated to full-time membership. Um, web, digital and graphic design, we have three full-time staff producing videos like the one we saw at the top. Uh, four people full-time in merchandise, uh, producing merchandise and running our uh, cafe and merchandise shop, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, communications and social media, um, two, uh, and game day and events, two and a half. So our membership uh, program is called uh, Bulldogs Born and Bred. We relaunched that membership program um, this year, so the first year. Uh, we went back to our membership, we did an enormous piece of research and tried to work through what it was, what it meant to them to be a Bulldog member. And the reality was that you were born into the lifestyle, so your father was a fan or your mum was a fan or your uncle played for the club or you were born in the area, you are born in the streets around Belmore or Canary Bankstown. Um, or you're bred into it because you marry someone or your best friend or in, you know what, you just like blue and white colours and that's why you chose the team. However, we don't really mind, we'll take you in and make you part of the family and make you feel really engaged. Um, so we have 18,000 members, which is the most that we have ever um, had, so we've just clicked over 18,000 this week. Um, and that's a, big, that's a big number for the Bulldogs. Um, interestingly, the piece of research uh, that came back, um, so if you have South Sydney at one end, which you'll all know the Russell Crowe South Sydney, they got kicked out of the competition about 15 years ago, and he led, how it was part of leading the charge to bring them back. They were broke, they had no money, they had no leagues club, they had no way to engage. Um, so they launched a membership program and they've just clicked over 35,000 fans. And the research that came back was like, we need to be a member of Souths because that's how they're going to remain in the competition and that's how we need the money. I need your $100, I need your $200. When we surveyed our fans, they went, oh, you're rich, we don't need your money. You know, you, they didn't think that we needed it. So it's been interesting communication because we have to target their heartstrings. We have to do things that are different, that aren't just about the play the poor card and the poor man's card as to why we need them to be members. There's 17 different packages um, that you can see there. So you can be everything from a, a pedigree platinum plus, which is very hard to say quickly, uh, a member, which is about $1,000 a year. That gives you uh, premium seats, um, special experiences, one-on-one -on -one with a coach, um, behind-the-scenes tours, really at the top end, down to a, um, 
Oh, a, a passionate pledge membership, which is $40, which is really just for you saying, I'm proud to be a Bulldogs member, I want to be part of the club, I want all of that membership information, and everything in between. So three game packages, seven game packages, all the games, best seats in the house, GA membership, all of those things that come together. So there's a lot of different combinations uh, that you can imagine as we, we try and satisfy all those different niche opportunities uh, in, in that market, um, and also recognising that same thing. I want to be a member, but I can't go to every game. So how do I, how do I build those um, different packages to fit? Um, and we also have a dog membership in case you want to uh, sign your dog up. Um, and actually we have about uh, 400 of those. <coughs> We run a loyalty program um, which is about, it's called the 18th. So we retired number 18 as the jersey and that is the members jersey. Um, every, every home game um, we present the 18th jersey to a long standing loyal member. We take them on the field, we um, get a, a great former great player to uh, present that to them. Um, and that's something that they all, the members that have been um, part of us for a long time really look up to. Um, and then uh, we, as you move up the scale into 50 years, of which we have some um, fans that have been around 50 years, we get a diamond key ring. So it's not really about the value, it's not really about the item, it's about wearing that and having that key ring and the sense of pride that, that people have. Um, I've never seen uh, membership or members like I've seen at the Bulldogs. Um, we, this is, uh, integrates um, here into born and bred to use, because for us that's, what, that's our product that we have, that we try and sell and promote, so we try and integrate it into all of our marketing as well. Um, my, one of my um, most interesting stories since I was at the Bulldogs, I was in Brisbane Airport, we'd played the night before we'd lost, and I was standing there and this man came up to me and he said, uh, I was actually on the phone and he was like trying to talk to me. I said, I won't be a moment. And I hung up the phone call and he said, oh, just wondering if I could have a photo with you. And he was about 55, I suppose. He had his daughter with him who was about uh, 20. And he said, I just need a photo of you to complete the set. And I was thinking, that was a bit odd. He said, well, I've got a pool room and it's got all my, my Bulldogs memorabilia in it, and I've got a photo of Peter Moore and Bull, Bullfrog Moore, and I've got a photo of T Todd Greenberg, and now I need a photo of you so that I can have that on the wall. And I was thinking, oh, this is a bit weird. Um, so he took the photo, and that's fine, and we're chatting away, and he had Bulldogs tattooed B-U-L-L-D-O-G-S down his arm, so to a 55-year-old man, and like block capitals, nothing sort of very stylish or design about it. And as he, as, um, he walked away, I said to him, Thanks very much for your support, I really appreciate it. And he turned around and he looked at me and he said, this is more than support. And it was at that stage where I could see the team, very large people like Greg Eastwood and Sam Cassiano thinking, I might need to call on them in a moment. So we have these incredibly passionate fans that live every single day um, for what it means to be a Bulldog. Merchandise is an incredibly important part of what we do, um, generate about uh, Four million dollars worth of revenue every year out of our merchandise sales. Um, this jersey, uh, these two jerseys here, we design about seven different jerseys every year, um, which is for two reasons. One is to keep the product fresh. Secondly, is to generate a lot of revenue. Um, the one on um, the left there is our new heritage jersey, which we will play in for the first time this year because of our 80th anniversary. Is a combination of the blue V at the top and the butcher stripe at the bottom, which is sort of bringing the two, the old and the new, together. Um, and that jersey will have the name of every single player um, in the white, just in little text, that's played first grade for the Bulldogs in it, on it. So that will become an enormous collector's item. And the one on the right is, uh, actually you're about the first people to see this because we haven't even la launched this to our fans yet, um, and that's going to be Ruby being 40, um, being 40 years, double that, get to 80, the Ruby jersey, um, and we will wear that once this year, um, and that will be the only time we wear it, so that will become a collector's item um, for our fans, um, and a chance to really you know, communicate in a different way about what our brand stands for. For us to move away from the blue V would be something that I think um, we would never do just because of the importance of what it means to the history of, of the Bulldogs um, and how many great stories that we've seen as, as, in years go by wearing that blue V. 
Uh, we're a merchandise store. We sell, I'm not sure how many items, um, but as we led up into the grand final this year, uh, we basically had a T-shirt um, designed and turned around within about 24 hours of every uh, week we went further and further into the final series. So, um, as we, so that's the one that never saw the light of day because that was the one that we had produced or that we had sitting design ready waiting to go if we'd won the grand final. The moment we'd won the grand final, we would have pushed print. I um, mean, four hours later, they would have turned up in the shop, in our shop in Belmore, which is the home of where the Bulldogs are. Um, in the week before when we beat Penrith in the semi final, uh, or minor final, um, we had uh, t-shirts like that, they literally arrived at 2 o'clock in the morning and there was 300 people standing in a queue outside that at 2 o'clock in the morning waiting to be the first to get their hands on that t-shirt. Um, to make, just to put it into context for you, to make a grand final, um, uh, to get uh, to a grand final is about $500,000 extra revenue, um, to win a grand final is about another $500,000, so that's a million dollars upside for winning a grand final, off the back of commercial opportunities and, and the turnaround and extra merchandise sales that you have. So it's a pretty big, uh, a big benefit to uh, get to the final dance. Uh, we have a team um, that uh, are web, digital and graphic designers. We produce about 35 pieces of content a week, um, which, does that sound like a lot? Um, it's, it's a lot when you've got two people working full time. All of that is video, so 35 pieces of video. And the really challenging thing in the modern era, that is communication um, with uh, smartphones and engagement, is that piece of content that can take you three or four hours to put together lasts about three or four hours. So once people have seen it, they've moved on. So I'm, I'm at lunch break, I've seen it, and I'm at my desk, I've seen it. I don't want to see it again. So we, we create this enormous store of content that has a shelf life of half a day to a day to a week on it and if it's something really special. And that's wh why we need a team of people because that's how our fans want to engage with us. That's how they see um, that they can have that relationship with it. They want behind the scenes. Um, we produce a, a, an injury report. Um, so the physio talks down the barrel. Um, he talks about all the, f the injuries that we've got, what's happening, how their progress is going. Um, we have about 35,000, 45,000 hits on that, people wanting to know what's happening in injuries. Um, team an announcements, match reviews and previews, um, and it's, that's an example of our app on the left-hand side there. That's our um, app that we um, constantly deliver information to, you know, like I said, 35 times a week. I don't, yeah, a week. <clears throat> um, to make it um, more interesting, we try and um, make the content that we're producing um, with people more interesting. Um, you know, we've got a fantastic graphic designer who's introduced the caricatures, which you can see on the left-hand side. It just gives people a different sense than using photos all the time. It allows them to engage in a different way. Um, and then the Dragons versus Bulldogs, um, that's what a, a preview match report looks like. So all of that content gets presented in a way that's different depending on the team that we play um, because all of the relationships that we have with all the different competitors has a long, long history and a, and a different style that we engage with them with. So it's about continuing to make sure you keep it fresh and you keep it interesting and having talented people on your staff that you can go to and have these things turned around um, in, a, in a really short space of time is incredibly beneficial. Uh, communications and social media, um, we do about five uh, Facebook posts um, a day which will be include some of that video content that we're talking about, um, 40 tweets per day, so, for a, so if you think about trying to tweet 40 times of relevant information, that's a lot of ways of saying the same thing a lot of times a day over and over and over again, but trying to make it fresh, um, and four Instagram posts per day. We have, um, a, for me, um, I'm, on, um, I'm on Twitter, it's a incredibly interesting way to engage with your fans. Um, it's a great um, touch test as to how the market's going. Uh, the reality is that when things are going great, I don't hear very much. When things are going terrible, I hear a whole bunch. Um, and the keyboard warriors that are the people that are on uh, Twitter are just truly amazing. I've had um, just get some, some days you can get completely carved up. 
and, the, and they don't care. They are behind some kind of um, ha Twitter handle that is their own um, and they say the most unbelievable things. Uh, and it's, it's been a real experience, a real learning experience for what it's like to be um, semi-public property, I suppose, and everybody thinks they've got a right to comment on everything from what you're wearing to how you look through to the decisions that you've made around the, uh, around the football team. So it's, um, it's been a, uh, a great exper experience for me, uh, but also something that I've learned a lot from, that's for sure. <coughs> The um, single biggest challenge that I've had probably uh, since I got to the Bulldogs is trying to manage the media. And that we have 80 journalists that work in full time in rugby league um, that have to produce content across newspapers, radio, television, uh, and, um, and social media. So that's an enormous amount of people that keep a very, very big machine going every single day. Um, any, in any one week, they will write between 45 and 50 articles on the Bulldogs, whether that's in the newspaper, whether that's radio interviews, whether that's um, on television. Um, and it absolutely influences fans' perceptions. So when they read it in the paper, they believe it to be true. So it doesn't matter. Don't, don't dare let the truth get in the way of, of a good story because it's just, and I, I don't know how many times I've found myself in those situations where they just make stuff up and they're never held accountable. They don't have any concept of um, apologising when they get something wrong. Um, and it's been a really, really interesting experience. I was driving down the road um, on my way to work and Maddie Johns, who many of you will know, has um, said, I've got some hot gossip. And um, I've heard it firsthand, the Bulldogs are going to announce Jared Hayne signing as fullback tomorrow morning. And I was driving down the road thinking, I think I'd probably know something about that if that was going to happen. And there's no accountability. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference um, whether it's the truth. It's just someone said who someone said or someone might have seen someone and next thing it becomes fact. And that's something that's really, really difficult to manage. Um, I was having some really challenging, uh, we were having a challenging time when I first got there with um, a Ben Barber who um, was one of our athletes who got himself into a, a really challenging domestic dispute issue. And it was the se it, we'd been through it the first time before my time with Tom Greenberg and we'd got to the second time, <coughs> excuse me, and I went in to meet with the editor of the Telegraph and the editor of the Weekend Telegraph and we were trying to explain the complexities of what is a, a, a really difficult domestic violence situation and why putting that on the front page of the newspaper wouldn't be a very good idea. And we had negotiated a position so that he would do an exclusive with him and a positive family story because his family got back together and it was all um, and, uh, going well. And the editor looked at me and he said, Raylan, you need to understand that if the Bulldogs do something wrong and we can put them on the front page of the newspaper, we will sell 30,000 more copies of the newspaper because the Bulldogs are on the front page. So it doesn't actually matter what you say to me, it doesn't matter how good your argument is, it doesn't matter how sorry I feel for you in that situation, the reality is we're going to put you on the front page of the paper because it makes us more money. So every, every time you have a negative situation, and the photo that I've got um, there um, is probably you know, a situation that I went through last week, which was one of the most challenging experiences I've had in my career. We had, 10 years ago, we had an enormous issue with crowd behavior. We had a rogue element that was turning up to Bulldogs games and using it as, as, an exa as an, um, uh, a way to fight and to cause havoc and riot and all sorts of really, really difficult things. Um, Todd and the board did a great job of cleaning up all of that. And for 10 years, we've been incident free. And then last Good Friday, we had 40, just over 40,000 people. We had probably the best, what well, wasn't probably, it was the best game of football of the year, grand final rematch. It was our Bulldogs home game. Uh, we owed Souths because they'd cleaned us up in the grand final. We were in front with 90 seconds to go. And James Graham, who you can see there, who is our captain, um, charged, tried to charge down a drop goal. We're one point in front. 
and he collected the legs of the person that was kicking the ball and then all, literally when I say hell broke loose, um, in my world for a week that was exactly what it was. Uh, and it all just, the snowball effect of those sequencing just turned crazy. So um, James got up, thought he'd done the right thing, ended up getting in the face of the referee and you can see him there in that photograph. Um, and that photograph probably between that, the piece of video and vision would have got played, I can't imagine, 400 times over the uh, week. So trying to shut an issue down, trying to crisis manage a public relations issue. And every time you turn around, you look on the TV and either that photo is in the paper or that's being shown on the uh, TV is a really uh, difficult thing to manage. Um, the player on the left is uh, David Klima, who's a young, fired up guy. He called the, um, uh, he used the F word in relation to the referee and got 10 minutes in the bin, which is never a good thing to do. Um, and then as the game finished, uh, they got a penalty, they won. Our fans went um, crazy, but 10 or 12 fans decided that throwing full bottles of water at the referee as they left the field was a good idea. Um, I happened to be standing in the tunnel at that time uh, and um, uh, uh, there's bottles flying around and I was, uh, I don't know, I was actually sta standing and I've seen it back on video, standing there going, cut it out guys, come on, come on, cut it out, you know, calm down, this is ridiculous. Um, but it's, a, it's one of those situations that you, you're in the middle of it and you're trying very hard to control it. So. 10 years of good work, 10 years of never having an issue at a game, um, ANZ to say we're the greatest group of fans to have because as I said before, most of us don't drink, has all come undone because of three specific events. Any one of those events in a separate situation on its own would have been manageable and we would have been able to control quite quickly. Um, but because all three of them happened one after the other, it meant it was just like headline news for a week. Um, so it's been, uh, it's been a great uh, learning. Um, it's also shown me um, the absolute power of the media and how um, all sorts of, everyone's got an opinion, all these, we have you know, um, about seven or eight magazine style shows that talk about rugby league and, and this was, was great fodder for them on a regular basis over that week. So it's been a very interesting time, um, you know, having to reprimand captains, having to, um, uh, we, nine weeks of suspension out of those two actions um, for, for that. Um, that's a lot of game time missed. And the roll on implications of those um, actions has an enormous effect not only on the performance of the team, but also the potential commercial um, impact for the Bulldogs of people not wanting to come to games, not buying a ticket, not turning up, and was I going to buy membership now, I'm not sure. All of those things that are so closely linked and integrated um, means that, that that but for six inches, if he'd been six inches further that way and actually charged the ball down, we wouldn't be having any of those conversations. Um, <clears throat> so even I can be in caricature. Um, so four times a year I uh, blog with the fans, so I just get on at seven o'clock at night um, and I just answer questions and I answer ev anything they throw at me on blogs. So absolutely nothing's off limits and if I can answer the question honestly, I'll try to do that. Uh, and it's a really good way because people, you call an open meeting like this um, and you know you get sort of maybe 30 or 40 really dedicated fans turn up, but in this way when I'm blogging I can talk to hundreds of fans at any one time. It's a really good way to engage. This is an idea of what a weekly content plan looks like. So this is the, the way that we look at um, building um, as, we, as we work towards game day. So we start with the review of last week's games. Great when you've won, much harder when you've lost. Um, we look at the preview of what the um, actual, who we're playing, who the opposition are, what injuries they've got, what injuries we've got, what our for and against, all of those things that you'd expect. Um, and then you move into the game day, um, as you, you know, the day before and move into game day. So we produce one of those. We have 13 home games every year. We produce a content plan like that 13 times for our 13 home games. Um, and then we will just work to support the um, opposition team if we're, if we're playing them. For a lot of the clubs, we have reciprocal home and away. So we work jointly together to make sure that we're engaging um, with those clubs at the same time and making sure that we can maximise um, the opportunities for when it's our home game and we're taking the gate, but also supporting our mates when it's their home game. Um, that really is the guts from an operational point of view of what we deliver. So that's where the fans expect engagement. 
um, and the type of things that we put together um, this year, we've tried to be, um, one of our strategic pillars in our new strategic plan is to be the most innovative game day experience, rugby league game day experience um, in Australia. And so some of the new things, which is there's never new ideas because you just steal and borrow big from you know other experiences. But for us, um, we've got a new bulldog head um, where the, the players run onto the field, and we've got the big kennel jersey that they roll down before the start of a game, um, and they've started taking that game that jersey to away matches as well to try and um, make sure the the players know where they are, um, and a t-shirt cannon um, that we that we fire up into the crowd. Um, so yeah, s some new innovations to try and make sure that for us at game day, really difficult in a stadium at, at ANZ that seats 80,000 people, that's a lot of people. It's a lot of seats when they're empty and it's a lot of people when it's full. Um, we also, for our um, uh, Good Friday game, we tried really hard to make it a big event. That's our biggest opportunity to sell tickets. We were hoping for a 50,000 crowd. Uh, the reality is it rained all day, it list, list did not stop, so that probably cost us 10,000 ticket sales as we walked up, to, that would have walked up. Um, but we decided to go all out and we got a guy called Tim Ometic. I don't know if any guy, you guys, some of you will know who he is. He's big in Australia, he's just relaunched himself as Tim Amaji. So he came into the Bulldogs um, the day before and, did, and produced a promo video. So this is another example of what we um, produce in-house and turn around on a daily basis. What's up guys, it's Tim Amaji here, I'm down here at Belmore Sports Grounds, chucking it around with the boys, getting ready pre-game for the massive game at ANZ Stadium this Friday, going down. Catch me at ANZ Stadium this Friday to see the Bulldogs taking on the Rabbitohs. It's going down. I'll be performing my brand new single, Something About You. Check it out. So all of the work that we've done to produce to get Tim Amaji there and all of that just got absolutely no one was interested in talking about any of that stuff when we've got you know, all the other things going on last week with captains and poor behaviour and things, so it's really hard when you're trying to motivate a team to make sure they continue to pr produce good content like that when you are uh, consistently, uh, people are interested in talking about it because they're interested in talking about football. Um, one of the other innovations is in, so uh, the Bulldogs um, ha are from Belmore, which is the spiritual home of uh, the Bulldogs, and uh, we were, we have a ground there that seats about 17,000 people. Um, we've also bought um, back to Belmore our traditional home, um, the high performance facility and our admin. So we're fully integrated in one location, all football, all admin, um, all in one location, which is really a, an amazing thing and, and makes um, integrating those two parts of the business much easier. Uh, in the main street of Belmore, we also have um, a strip uh, shopping, which is full of kebab shops and cafes and dry cleaners and pharmac pharmacies and things like that. And we have just opened our own merchandise store um, and cafe. So it's the first in Australasia which has a, a club with its own cafe and merchandise store. Um, it's got a, a world class fit out and, and we think that it's a chance where everyone will come together and be part of that experience that what that to experience what the Bulldogs are. So you can buy merchandise, you can have a cup of coffee, um, you can see the live social media feeds coming in from all across the world, um, you can watch old games, um, it's a chance to bring our current players and our former players into one location. Um, and um, since we've been open, um, it's just gone absolutely through the roof. It's been open about six weeks, um, and it's just gone really well, and here's just a quick video about it. The Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs are pleased to unveil the most innovative sporting retail experience in Australia. Combining a cafe with a merchandise shop, the Bulldog Belmore is set to become an iconic destination for Bulldogs members and fans. It is our hope that the Bulldog becomes a hub for the Bulldog family, a destination for fans from around Australia and around the world to come together to share their passion for the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. 
So that's not only a, a, a brand statement for us about the professionalism of presenting the Bulldogs in a way that has um, the unique look and feel, the power of the blue and white, um, but it's also a revenue opportunity for us. So we um, think that that will add some significant value to our bottom line. Um, if you'd said to me, um, you're going to be the CEO of the Bulldogs, oh, and by the way, you're going to have responsibility for running a cafe. Um, I'm not sure that was in the job brief. Um, but that's one of those things. There's just an opportunity, um, and we really think that we can set the benchmark for, for a, a different experience in, uh, in the cafe and merchandise world. I have got, uh, thank you, and I've just got one video to finish off. So just to give you some idea, so talking about Powered by Passion, and this is a video that they, that they filmed during our grand final lead into grand final week last week, uh, last year rather, and um, this will just give you some idea of what our, who our fans are and actually what they look like and the different sizes and shapes and ages of them all. This is Dr. Brian Allen, leading neurosurgeon, federal president of the AMA, face of the state government's anti-speeding campaign. And when the weekend comes, rabid Bulldogs fan. Back in uh, you know, the 70s and 80s, I followed Steve Mortimer. He was my childhood hero. And um, you know all the Mortimers and uh, the Hughes, I thought uh, you know, it was a fantastic club and followed them every week uh, religiously. The Doc wore blue and white himself for local team St Luke's. Where did the love start? Uh, well, I grew up in the area and, of course, followed the team and all my schoolmates followed the team. The doc may love the doggies, but the nurses' station is prepared to deliver their verdict, stat. Seriously, Panthers are going to smash them. Back down at Belmore at the Bulldog shop, one group of fans stocking up on kit have been following the doggies for decades. They're known as the Dog Squad. I've been taken to the game since I was nine months old. I'm 38 now. And um, a lot of the people who know me have known me since I was a kid. They travel to all games, home and away, regardless of where Canterbury will clash. And to see a bit of the world that you wouldn't normally see before. If it's got a football stadium, we've seen it. One doggies fan making waves virtually is Nahia Garib, the face of Tatertube on Facebook. Grandson Nasim Batar was looking for a way to cheer his grandma up after breast cancer surgery and tapping into her love for the dogs was the way. I love a bulldog. I love you, George Romanos. I love you, number six. I She's like a big dogs fanatic, and she couldn't hack seeing them lose. She's always blamed the referee if they lost. Her love for the team has seen both players and fans wanting to meet her, even when she calls Josh Reynolds George Romanos. The clock is ticking on the start of preliminary finals fever, and these doggies fans have got the contagion. Mike Dalton, Nine News. So that guy there, um, he paints, it takes him four hours to get ready. He goes to every game. He paints himself covered um, like that. And he stood outside the merchandise shop for eight days in a row with queues of 20 and 30 people at any one time to get into the store and entertain the crowd free of charge. He did nothing. We bought him a grand final ticket because he couldn't afford to go otherwise. We bought him, him and his wife a grand final ticket. He's got a bike. It's got ribbons on it. I mean, I, I can't describe to you what they're like. The four or six women that you saw in that show, they're called the Dog Squad. They call themselves the Dog Squad. Um, they are in a, probably an age from 45 to 60. They travel to every game. It doesn't matter. And when Michael Ennis um, left the Bulldogs last year, they, um, we invited them to come to the presentation night so that they could have a chance to come along to the presentation night um, and say goodbye. And one of them, and she came up to me, she said, Raylene, thank you for inviting us, she said, because there's just, we just, like, we couldn't have, um, we couldn't have let Michael leave without saying goodbye. I mean, you know, it just wouldn't have been the same if we hadn't had the opportunity. And they just believe that the Bulldogs are the Bulldogs because of the support that they have. So it's a, it's a very special club. Um, I feel very uh, honoured uh, to have been part of it. And um, thanks very much. I'm really happy to take any questions. I think uh, the comment about moving from Belmore to ANZ, other than the economics of stadium size, what are the other advantages around moving from such a small field where the heartland is based to a major international facility which is very difficult to fill. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's the, the $64 million question. And, and the answer to that is um, professional um, stadia, uh, in-stadia Wi-Fi, changing rooms that are world class, um, hot and colds for athletes, all of those things that you imagine um, from a high performance perspective, running an event where um, you have professional event 
engagement capabilities and, and operations happening. Um, on the fan side, you have uh, proper toilets, not port -a -loos. You have hot food and a selection of different food that you can um, you know, engage with on a regular basis. Transport in and out, parking capabilities, all of those things that a world-class facility bring you. Uh, and you know we're taking two games back to Belmore this year in our 80th anniversary to, to experience. Um, so people, um, my view is people are in love with the um, view of Belmore and the memory of it. And I used to sit there with my granddad on the hill and watch the great Terry Lamb and Steve Mortimer and those guys play. The reality of it when you're sitting on a muddy bank and sliding down it if it's raining and you have to queue for a portaloo and you'll get soggy cold chips. We'll try and make sure that doesn't happen. But you know those things, I'm not sure the reality of that will stack up to that very comfortable experience at a ANZ Stadium.